Welcome to another video from Lockdown Electronics with me Bill and this time we're going to take a look at this device which is a low FX1 dip oscillator. Now if you're a radio amateur you're probably familiar with these if you're not you probably wonder what on earth it is it's actually in one sense it's an RF signal generator but it does other things too and I have to say thanks very much to, to Kevin Joyce who is M0KRJ who whose eagle eyes spotted this um, on uh, on my benches behind when I was doing a video on a on a multimeter and asked um, if it was if I could possibly do a video on this I don't think he has any instructions and neither do I so I made a couple of interesting discoveries when I um, actually put a little bit of time into looking at this instrument which has been in my possession um, for at least 30 years. I bought it second hand at a, at a radio rally many years ago. So let's start by having a general look at what it is. Okay let's have a look at the low FX1 dip oscillator or dip meter and first thing to say is um, this is probably I'm guessing early 70s might be late 60s but probably early 70s and I think the next thing you have to remember is that um, this kind of instrument is from a time when the the idea of being able to get a something like a, a tiny SA spectrum analyzer for less than a hundred pounds was was completely unthinkable and this kind of instrument was was quite important to addition to um, radio amateurs shack and uh, an affordable uh, instrument at that uh, at that too so what is it well I think the first thing you can say it is it's um, an RF signal generator and it does that in seven ranges from 700 kilohertz to about 250 megahertz and the way it does that is uh, there's a set of coils fit in that socket there and there are seven different coils which match with these seven different colored ranges on the on the dial here to control the frequency and there's a, a ground and uh, an output um, connectors there uh, there is an earphone socket um, because th this is more than just a, a signal generator you can do something else with this uh, you can use it uh, as an absorption wave meter uh, now when I did my radio amateurs um, exams uh, it was um, impressed upon me I should have an absorption wave meter uh, in my radio shack to be able to monitor um, the transmissions that being in band etc and I can actually remember making one in the in the mid 80s um, it's um, goodness knows where that went but um, I've got other equipment that will make measurements like that now so I got this from a radio rally uh, I've had it at least 30 years um, and it certainly wasn't new when I got it um, um, still works fine so let's now have a look how these coil ranges work and so in the back we've got this um, knurled screw which comes undone and undoing that screw reveals a compartment with coils in so I'm just going to tip those out and I'm just going to um, put the back to one side so it's a, me it's a metal case which um, is probably um, quite unusual these days so there's a number of coils numbered from A uh, up to G uh, so if we pick coil A it says on there 0.7 to 1.7 um, megahertz and that coil simply pops in there and then we can switch on I'm, I've got it set to M at the moment I don't have instructions for this although I have managed to find a circuit diagram um, we turn it on and nothing appears to happen in actual fact if I continue to turn up the sensitivity you see that meter will now start to move across until it goes full scale there and depending on where you are in the band um, the level of oscillation that's going on will vary a little bit and that meter shows it um, so we have got RF signal out there uh, which we'll have a look at uh, on the scope now and we can see um, roughly what we get okay so I've got the FX1 just hooked up to my oscilloscope and you can see the waveform if I adjust the sensitivity the, the meter is now dropping down almost that fact that's that's zero and just as I get to about um, on the on the 0 to 10 scale when I get to about two we start to get a waveform which is approximate approximate the sine wave and if we just 
bring that in there we're getting um, according to the display if I look there I've got it tuned to 0.7 megahertz and I'm getting 703 kilohertz so that's actually pretty close when you think this is purely analog tuning so if I increase the frequency on this low band you can see the frequency is increasing so I'll just go up to the to the far end on on a there so that's if I can get it lined up that's about 1.6 on this display and that's 1.64 so that that's pretty good really um for, for what at the time would have been quite quite a handy RF signal generator and changing band is an absolute doddle uh, if I pop in the um, 3 to 7 which is the C I pop in that uh, that coil and you can hopefully see there that we're getting a little bit of jittering about that says more about my leads than anything else but again yeah you've got so we're on C so if I put C on 6 but that's about 6 megahertz on the dial and that's 5.97 so um, back in the 70s that was um, an impressive level of accuracy we'd be we'd be disappointed with it these days so there's three three megahertz on the dial 3.06 yeah that's pretty good really so um, uh, the, the purpose I got it for which was an RF signal generator it's actually pretty good at now my scope has a bandwidth of up to um, uh, 100 megahertz so I can't show you the very top end but I'll put in F the F coil which is 42 to 110 so I'll tune to 42 there I'll just get the scope to acquire that signal for me and actually it's a, a lot nearer a sine wave now than um, it was before as you can see so according to the display that's that's about 42 megahertz and it's saying 43.7 so in terms of percentage accuracy, it's very similar to um, what you were getting before. Um, so if I now go up to, let's go up to 90 megahertz, so that's 90 megahertz, and that's actually saying 90.5, so it's probably more accurate near the top. So at 100 megahertz, 100 megahertz on the dial, uh, 99.5, that's, that's, um, that's pretty good really. Um, so let's put the last coil in, which is actually 83 to 215. I don't know if you can, how well you can see that. It's just a really a copper strip. So it, it is a coil, but only just. <laughs> um, so pop that in, and there's a much lower output um, in this range, not surprisingly. So we're on range G now. Um, so let's pick. 150 megahertz think the scope might just about be able to display 150 megahertz and it's not giving me no it's not going to give me a, a frequency readout for that unfortunately let's come back to something it might be able to read so 100 and it's 120 no too much uh, too much jigging about i'm afraid to be able to um, get your reliable reading but you can see it's still generating RF and if I go right up to 250 megahertz you know it's well beyond the bandwidth of my scope but um, there is a waveform there and it, it is actually um, it is actually producing energy although much lower and when you consider that um, you know you've gone from the A coil, which is multi windings there to what's effectively just a piece of, of copper strip on a on a circuit board, it's quite remarkable that the range is a little cover. So let's now um, have a look at the circuit and how this thing actually works. Okay, so for the next little bit of the demonstration, I've got uh, a coil and a capacitor in parallel, so that's a uh, parallel tuned circuit and I've got the two connections on the FX1 connected to that tuned circuit so we can examine uh, what's going on there using the instrument. So now I'm going to reposition the uh, camera so that you get a good view of the meter and then we'll hopefully see the uh, dip meter function in action. Okay I'm hopeful that you can see the uh, needle there 
and I'm going to adjust the sensitivity now so that it's at about 5 on the 0 to 10 scale. Remember this isn't telling me anything other than uh, relative measurements as to how much oscillation is going on inside the inside the dip meter. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start increasing the frequency. I'm currently at about uh, 3.25 megahertz so I'm going to start going up slowly and I don't know whether how well you can see that. I'll now, I'm now at 3.7 I'll come back and there's a point here there just there which according to the meter is about 3.37 megahertz where the signal dips there that's about as low as I can get it if I move down frequency from that it returns to its normal level if I go through that dip there it returns to its normal level and stays there so there's something going on at that point and that that essentially is the dip meter in action I'm sorry it's not terribly exciting to see it but what's going on here is um, at that frequency this tune circuit clearly has some resonance and the energy that's going around and around in the oscillator at that frequency some of it is drawn away by the uh, circuit being tested and the net effect of that is the level of energy inside the oscillator circuit reduces and that's what the meter is showing us so we're able there to find the resonant point of those two uh, components in wired in a tune circuit and if I just move backwards and forwards in between the you can see the dip quite distinctly there now it's possible again it's an you know if you turn up the level to about nine uh, you'll still get that dip there it is just there but it's not as obvious so there's a little bit of skill required in using this I find that if you set it to about mid range and then go through the dip there you can hopefully see the meter needle moving uh, backwards and forwards so that's the dip meter function okay so now I'm going to attempt to show you the absorption wave meter function um, it's not terribly easy but uh, it uses this LED and we'll have a, as I say we'll have a look at the circuit diagram uh, in a minute um, so I've switched the uh, selector to RF uh, it does need to be switched on for this uh, and I've got a VHF transceiver here so I'm going to transmit um, just a, a signal um, in the uh, in the 2 meter uh, ammeter band uh, so I'm just going to transmit now and hopefully while I'm transmitting if I now move up here you should in a minute see the LED as lit now, except it's not very light but you hopefully let me just try that again there you go, it lights up there as we approach the 140 megahertz and to be honest my experience of absorption wave meters is that's um, about what you should expect from them so that's the absorption wave meter function we've seen the dip meter function now there are two other settings on here uh, sorry there are well there's three settings altogether there's RF which is the absorption wave meter there is M and O now I'm guessing M means meter and I'm guessing sorry I'm guessing that O means oscillator and M means modulated and that's what I've always thought although there is no detectable difference between M and O when you look at the output on a scope so uh, let's now have a look inside the instrument and also then at the circuit diagram okay I've removed the uh, six screws and the case and the bottom half of the case then slides away and you can see we've got uh, PP3 power supply 9 volts we've got the selector switch here the meter and the uh, potentiometer and the headphone socket and then we've got the uh, ganged variable capacitor there dual capacitor and the circuit board um, is here so um, relatively straightforward and obviously built in a nice um, metal case um, which um, isn't something you always get these days so let's now have a look at the circuit diagram because it's it's particularly interesting I managed to find this on Electro Tanya so thanks Electro Tanya for, for managing to um, find us a copy of this we'll make sure that's in focus so what we what we've got 
is here we've got an oscillator based on this uh, transistor here and the plug-in coils go here and we've got the ganged inductors here with the centre tap so this is a Colpitz oscillator uh, design so we've got a Colpitz oscillator we've got a decoupling capacitor going to the um, RF connector and essentially this bit of the circuit oscillates it's tuned by those uh, and then there's a diode here which will obviously be rectifying um, that oscillation uh, and it goes down to the meter and you get the, the, the dip display and that's how the uh, dip oscillator works essentially it's just using uh, those two transistors in um, absorption wave meter mode uh, we add in this transistor here um, in fact uh, the LED that you saw lighting up there is driven by that transistor so again using this tuned circuit arrangement here this part of the Colpitz oscillator the RF essentially will be rectified uh, and we're not really making very much uh, use of this um, oscillator here and in fact I don't think it's actually in circuit and um, the way the switches are uh, the meter is out of circuit so this transistor effectively drives that LED so depending on whether you're at a point where that's resonant it should light up the LED and that is the wave meter function. Now the uh, M function which is the center switch which I've always taken to be modulation um, induces this bit of the circuit into the um, uh, operation so you're now using the, the main oscillator here and you're using this bit of circuit here which um, I think is also an oscillator. Now I'm going to say I think because um, I'm now going to show you a photograph of the circuit board close up and it wasn't until I started making this video I noticed that uh, something isn't quite right on this circuit board. There are uh, some components missing. In particular R11 and R12 um, you can see they're missing and TR3 if we take a close-up of TR3 um, as you can see there TR3 on the well TR3 on the circuit diagram is a 2SC945 and as you can see there that's not a TSC945 and it's had the center lead insulated so I'm not quite sure what's going on but clearly whoever um, got rid of this all those years ago had done something to this part of the circuit which means that no longer functions an oscillator so I don't think the modulation function works on mine. If you've got one of these and it does modulate I'd just be interested to know, perhaps you can let us know in the comments, uh, but certainly my dip oscillator and my absorption wave meter functions work fine but this bit uh, as you saw in those photos is um, clearly been messed with and if you look here at the underside of the circuit board you can see there's uh, flux residue and clearly somebody's been in there and done something so it's no longer um, how it looked. So looking back at the insides again here um, I'll be honest when I bought this the only thing I've ever done when I've opened the back really apart from a quick look is change the battery. I've never looked closely at the circuit board before but clearly um, uh, this wasn't 100% uh, working when I bought it. Uh, luckily for me, uh, I've only ever wanted it for the um, RF signal generator function and so it, it's never bothered me over the years. But that is um, the low FX1 uh, dip oscillator, absorption wave meter. And um, as I said earlier, yeah, it's an instrument of its time. It seems a bit crude now. Um, however, you know back then um, this was quite a handy instrument to, and I'm sure there's plenty of radiometers have still got examples of, of these instruments in the, in their radio shacks. Finally there is a headphone socket I mentioned it before that I believe uh, would come into play if you wanted to listen to the absorption wave meter output so you could you could hear the demodulated demodulated by that diode there so that you could hear what's going on. Um, I suspect that requires one of those uh, high impedance crystal earpieces which I don't have so plugging uh, a low impedance device into there doesn't um, doesn't work. I think it's expecting a, a much higher impedance device but again I've got other means of looking at modulation so it doesn't concern me. But um, yeah, there you go. So if you've not seen one before um, 
yeah actually it's all right I, I can't remember how much i paid for it maybe only 15 pounds or something like that all those years ago so it doesn't owe me anything and um it, it's still a handy tool if i want um, to generate an rf signal up as far as 250 megahertz okay well that's it for our look at the low fx1 hopefully it's made a bit of sense as i've just mentioned if uh, you do know what the um, m function is and whether that bit of the circuit is a modulator if you've got one of these and yours does do that i'd be uh, interested to hear or perhaps you can put me right on on the function of that bit of the circuit uh, i'll put a link to the electro tanya page in the description so if you want to get the circuit diagram you can do and the, what the only thing i've probably not mentioned is that uh this is a transistorized version originally these things were called gdo's or grid dip oscillators because they essentially measured the amount of energy in the oscillating circuit of a grid on something like a, a triode hence the grid dip um fets are similar in in function to um to triodes and so initially i think people started making these with fets this doesn't contain any FETs it's just all bipolar transistors um, but uh, it achieves the same ends so I hope that's made some sense thanks very much for watching uh, if you can click like and if you've not subscribed that'd be good if you could too um, clicking like and subscribing really helps the channel to grow and helps me and cost you nothing thanks very much for watching look forward to seeing you on the next video